Hi! <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to the Wednesday show, another installment. My name's Olivia, I'm the prevention coordinator at the WCA. And I'm Becca, I'm the JB outreach coordinator at the WCA for the next month. Oh my and gosh, then... <laughs> I can't believe you would bring that up right now. I know, and then we're The audacity, here. that really is. Our finale is. episode has to be something big, we gotta figure it out. But... Yeah, us crying. Yeah, us crying. I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull up things so I can read the comments. Okay. Anywho, um, first of all, we want to start off the... No, first of all, <laughs> we're going to start off the show with our theme song. Our theme song from our anonymous viewer. Oh great! Thank you, anonymous viewer, again. That's we just... have a theme song. We have a theme. It's theme pretty, song. pretty legit. We don't have any production team. Mm -hmm. We are our own production team. Oh hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. But you don't need a production team when you've got this stage set up. This stage set better. Anyway, yes. Starting off, we want to start by saying that the WCA is still open for anyone who might need services for domestic abuse or sexual assault or if you just have any concerns about a relationship that you might feel um, might be unhealthy. So our 24-hour hotline number is 208-343-7025, and our hotlines are anonymous. They're not going to ask you any identifying information. So anyone can call, even if it's not you in the relationship, you can call for if you have a concern about someone else. And then if you're not able to make a call or it's not safe for you to make a call, you can always visit our crisis center, which is just behind the Capitol building, 720 West Washington Street. Awesome. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about how to be an everyday advocate in the community for um, preventing domestic violence and sexual assault. And to start that off, we have our shoe cards with us here today. So if you've never heard of a shoe card, this is one of the main things that the WCA uses to make people aware of our services. Um, it folds up in two like so. Mine is the Spanish version and Becca's is the one that's in English, but we call them a shoe card because the information on here isn't always safe for someone to have on their person, so it can slip into a shoe because it's so small. So that's why we call it a shoe card. Yeah. So these were developed um, over a decade ago, mm -hmm. um, and our communications manager said that when they first started out, we were handing out maybe a few thousand each year, but then recently, over the last few years, it's been like, we hand out about 25,000. Um, English, Spanish, and our teen shoe cards each year. So they are out in the community, um, but we want to make sure, one of our goals we say is that everyone carries one of these in their purse or wallet. So the goal of a shoe card um, is to be small enough. It's a, a small, but it's a really impactful way to give someone the resources that they might need in a way that doesn't draw a lot of attention to um, you giving them these resources. So some people will leave them in a, a bathroom mm -hmm. or anywhere like a dorm you could leave them in a dorm common room just so that they're not it's not making a big deal it's not someone can just pick them up without drawing a lot of attention yeah i think if you're going around our community sometimes if i like walk into a bathroom somewhere when it was like okay to be out in public and in restaurants and things like that i'd find them in restaurant bathrooms i'd find them in libraries they're in high schools on on the bsu campus and doctor's offices um, they're all around, so in case someone sees that and takes one because they need that information. Um, or even if you don't need it, but you put it in your wallet in case you see something a little bit off, and you can kind of give someone this so that they have the option of um, accessing the services listed on here. Yeah. Hi, Becca. Hi, Becca McGuire. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Tuning in. So we'll talk a little bit about what is on a shoe card. So on the back, we have some, uh, we have the WCA resources, our two hotlines, one for domestic uh, abuse and one for sexual assault. Um, and then there's other organizations like Faces of Hope. Faces of Hope, they do emergent services um, for also domestic abuse, child abuse, um, elder abuse, all of that. And then Idaho Legal Aid, and then the National Domestic Violence Hotline is on here too. Yep, and then our two hotline numbers. Oh, you already said that, didn't you? Okay. But there's also a little safety plan. Um, it's kind of, so you probably know one of our services that the court advocates provide and help with is creating individualized safety plans for um, people who come and visit or people they can do it over the phone if that's the way that the person needs the help. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this one is just a very generalized uh, safety plan, but it's 
helpful to know this kind of information. And then on the back, it gives you some uh, things, bullet points of if how to know, yeah, if you're being in, if you're in an abusive relationship. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we have a teen program called the Youth Wraps, and they are ten youth from across the Treasure Valley um, that work with us to kind of help our initiatives in the in youth led efforts to kind of um, access that demographic and they let us know that the shoe card that we have for adults this blue one doesn't really apply to them and it isn't um, helpful for their age group so they actually developed the teen shoe card this little orange worth shoe card um, the worth brand is the youth rep brand and it says on the front i'm worthy of love i'm worthy of respect and i'm worthy of equality and inside is more resources directed towards youth that are more fitting to them. So how to help a friend is in here. Um, and the advice it gives is to say something. So letting your friend know that you care if you see them in a relationship that's unhealthy and reaching out to them that way. Um, not just ignoring what you're seeing in hopes that it'll get better, but really acknowledging with that friend, like I care about you, I love you, um, and I am concerned about this behavior that I'm witnessing. Um, becoming informed, so going on to the Youth Rep Instagram or the WCA's Instagram or website and getting as much information as you can about domestic abuse and sexual assault so that you know how to properly help your friend and acknowledging that you don't need all the answers and you're not going to be able to know everything, so figuring out what resources can fill that gap. Um, guiding your friend to those resources, maintaining support even if their behavior is different from what they want. So making sure that even if your friend decides to stay with their partner um, who is being abusive, you have to support that decision because you can't force anyone to leave a relationship that's unhealthy and they're still gonna need your friendship and support during that time. So you have to maintain that supportive friendship. Um, if your friend decides to end the relationship, help them make a plan to be safe, which it's, recommends to go on to loveisrespect.org because they have a lot of teen focused resources to help you um, navigate breaking up with someone in a healthy and safe way because there are things like making sure maybe you're in a more public space letting someone know that you're about to do this and where you're going to be in case there's a retaliation um, and so on and then remembering that you can't fix your friend's problems so if your friend is in an unhealthy relationship you can't fix that for them so figuring out how to work with them and figure out what they need. And then we also just have the local resources um, and some national resources. And part one of the national resources that is really great for teens is the text option. So you can text love is to 22522. And it's just like calling the hotline, except it's via text messaging, which is a lot more comfortable for a lot of um, young people. Yeah, and then in the back, again, are some red flags and warning signs that you might be in an unhealthy relationship, but there are things that are more applicable to a teen's world and life than mm -hmm. on the normal shoe card. So we've got both of these and these are both accessible through our website and if you contact the WCA we'd be happy to get them out there. Um, like we said, like Becca said, we want everyone to be able to have one on their person. That's how we want to make sure that we're spreading awareness for the WCA and the services and domestic abuse and sexual assault. So let us know if you need any of these and we'd be happy to get them to you. Yeah, you can email outreach at WCA Boise if you want these shipped to you. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's one of the great things about a shoe card is like, like you were saying, you can't make that decision for someone to leave the relationship, but you can give them the option and offer resources mm -hmm. so that they have the ability to make that choice. If they don't know what the resources are, then it seems like they're kind of stuck. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, giving them the option is the best thing to do. And um, I believe Chris is posting in the comments the links to the Youth Reps page, to Love is Respect, and to the shoe cards that you can access on our website if you want to print them out, which is great. Also, plug for the Youth Rep program. Um, if you would like to become a Youth Rep or you know someone that would be a great fit for the Youth Rep program, we are accepting applications until the end of June and you can log on to our website or find the link in our Instagram bio at WCA Youth Reps and apply there. We would love to expand the program and have some more amazing youth this year to add to our current incredible youth. Mm -hmm. And then, do you want to talk about this? Uh, sure. So, <laughs> this, is, this is one of our um, handouts that we give out, but there's also, so we have this information available on our website. But one of the other ways we um, do outreach, kind of a, we're thinking about like ways that everyone can get involved in 
uh, share these resources. So there's a link on our website to print out these posters, these stall bathroom stall posters. They don't have to go in a bathroom, but that's where they are most often put, I think, just because um, it's a really, obviously it's a private place where people, yeah. it's not very visible by the public. So um, if you put these posters in a bathroom stall um, on the door, it's just a way for someone to see that information um, without, again, just drawing a lot of attention or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So on the poster, it has some warning signs of abuse, like, um, are you isolated? Do they, are you staying with your friends and family? And then it has our hotline numbers. So we recently heard from Albertsons, um, their company that in their corporate offices, these are in their bathroom stalls. So just making sure that um, there are ways for people to get these, this information, if it's not like safe for them to be going and seeking it out in public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that um, link is on our website. And I think I'm sure Chris, Chris will pop it in here. Chris She's doing awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Chris, for doing all this. Um, yeah, so we have our potty talk posters. If you want to check out our website, too, there's a lot of great resources on there um, that you can use to help you become a better everyday advocate and help yourself get informed. I think the best type of advocacy is informed advocacy. And you can do that by <laughs> reading as much as you can. We have things that we post on our social media and on our Facebook and on our Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn. We're on like so many social medias. Um, obviously, you're finding us if you're on our Facebook page right now. But also, if you share that content, then you can help inform your community and your friends as well. And that's a great way of being an advocate too. Yeah. I think in general, um, just spreading awareness if you don't have the the time to like a lot of everyone has full-time jobs and is doing their own lives but if you're not don't have the ability to you know read a bunch of stuff every time we post just short articles um, there's a website called domesticshelters.org and they if you go to that website they have a lot <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> they, have a lot, they have a lot of uh content on topics everything from lgbtqia abuse and um, teen healthy relationships, but yeah, there's a lot of ways to stay informed, but yeah, we do post good content that we find on our Instagram and, and Facebook. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, and then if you're doing all those things already and you're interested in getting more involved, the WCA has a lot of volunteer opportunities. Um, you can log on to our website there and figure out how to become a volunteer. We can fit you in and your skills pretty much anywhere. So come and join us. We love having new people um, helping us out around the office and in the community. And it's a great way to be involved and be an advocate. If you have the time and resources to join us, that would be amazing. Yeah. I think that's all. <laughs> <Jinx. laughs> that's all, folks. <laughs> oh, that's boy. Yeah. But yeah. So enjoy the rest of this hot, hot Wednesday. Hot it's going to be... Finally became summer. Kind yeah, of. Yeah, a little bit. A little less rain. Um, and we will see you all next week. Next. All right. Thanks for joining us. Bye.